Hey, how you guys doing? And uh, for this week's video, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, ACES color space workflow in Final Cut Pro 10. Now I've covered uh, using uh, ACES in application like uh, DaVinci Resolve. Unfortunately, uh, Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't natively support ACES workflow. So you have to use third party plugins. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to be using the um, uh, Color Finale Pro version 2 that supports, uh, supports ACES. Um, there's actually another plugin that's going to support in the future, which is um, uh, Core Melt's Chromatic. Um, I'm not sure exactly when that's coming out, but uh, they said they're going to uh, support it here in the near future. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, that right now on the desktop. Okay, here we are on the um, the desktop um, in Final Cut Pro 10, and we're utilizing the exactly the same three clips that we use for the DaVinci Resolve Aces Color Space um, tutorial, uh, just to do a comparison between DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro 10. Um, so I'm going to go over the cameras again, uh, again just to refresh your memory. Uh, the first camera is from a Canon C100 using the C-Log profile. The second camera is actually from a cell phone. This is the LG V30 which has an excellent built-in camera. And this is using Filmic Pro using the V-Log2. Um, the third camera is a Canon XF100 using a custom picture profile using the BBC settings and uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the actual ACES um, color space workflow. Now we have Color Finale Pro version 2 on all three clips already and set up just to show you. Um, now obviously for the color profile you're going to use ACES uh, out of the four selections and here you do have to use uh, input color space and also an output color space. Now for the input uh, color space, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of selection uh, with the uh, version two. It is limited to mostly um, the Canon C300. There are a few other ones, uh, Panasonic and um, I see, I see S-Log2 in there. So since the Canon C100 is very similar to the Canon C300, it uses exactly the same sensor, uh, super, using a super 35 millimeter sensor. We decide to go ahead and use the um, log uh, cinem cinema gamut type CD55. Seems to match uh, the best with this camera. And then all three clips we use the uh, Rec 709, which is pretty standard as far as finishing and um, rendering out. In this case, the uh, 100 nits. Um, but of course, you have quite a few selections in there to use uh, if you want to. Okay, with the um, LG V30, um, this is kind of the weak spot, I think, using. Uh, the um, Color Finale Pro version 2 is since you're limited on the type of cameras um, this was definitely not supported um, anytime as far as the um, input color space anything I chose just didn't work here I use the Canon EOS and uh, that kind of uh, waxed it all out uh, we'll use another one the Canon C300 and that doesn't work as well. Let me try the Panasonic. I haven't tried that. <laughs> okay, it's just as worse. So as you can see, it didn't really match up at all. And we're just going to select this to none for right now. And the uh, Canon XF100. Um, for the in input color space, uh, typically the Canon XF100 100 doesn't have a standard um, log picture profile so that's the reason I had to go on online and use the BBC settings you have to go manually in the camera and um, 
for exposure, um, sharpness, and things like that. And then you make it as flat as possible, and then you um, color grade it in post. Since there was no setting, I simply chose the generic one, which seemed to work the best. So I want to kind of show you some of the problems using uh, this scheme. I'm not necessarily it's saying it's the problem with um, color uh, grading central. Um, hopefully, in the like I said, in the future they're going to come out with uh, more supported um, cinema cameras. And also, just to show you as well, the obviously the um, LG V3 or LG V30 is not really a cinema camera. It is a cell phone, but it is um, the hardware in it is really uh, stupendous as far as the the lens, and the hardware, and things like that. And you can get uh, it was designed for videotography as well, but um, and it's really it's not really fair as well um, for. Um, uh, color grading central because it is the both of those cameras are not standard cinema cameras as well uh, the Canon XF100 and the LG V30 so it's uh, if it was a standard cinema camera then it'd probably be easier for um, color finale pro version 2 to work better uh, with the Asus color flow but um, it seems that DaVinci Resolve worked around that and not made it camera specific which works, uh, it seems to work much better than that. So hopefully in the future, Apple's gonna come out with a uh, be, uh, supported in ACES uh, color space workflow in the future sometime, instead of utilizing uh, third-party plugins, I, I hopefully they will. But uh, besides that, thanks for watching and uh, see you guys later.